My name is Dr. Stacy Hughes, and I co-host Oklahoma Side Slings in the Sooner State with my husband, Zachary. Hey, everyone. Have you ever heard the term going postal? Have you ever heard of Machine Gun Kelly? Not the singer, the outlaw. Did you know both going postal and Machine Gun Kelly originated in Oklahoma? Maybe you've heard the unbelievable cases involving serial killer Roger Dale Stafford, or perhaps the cannibalistic plot against a young girl named Jamie Bolin. Or perhaps you've heard of the unspeakable, unsolved murder of Karina Saunders. What about the Bever family familicide, or the case of Julius Jones, an innocent man on death row? These are just some of the incredible cases that we explore on Oklahoma side slayings in the Sooner State, a true crime podcast that delves into the murderous acts of Oklahomans across the Sooner State. Don't miss new episodes bi-weekly on Wednesdays. Oklahoma side is available on all major podcast platforms. Remember, it can happen anywhere to anyone. Stay safe, protect yourself and your loved ones. Hi, I'm Laura. And I'm Jill. And this is Crime Divers. Hello, and welcome to... Season three! Yes, we are back. We are back. We've had a nice break. I have, yes. I have enjoyed my break of you. Yeah, we've had a few weeks. We, had, we, well, didn't have an, we didn't have two episodes, but because we record in advance, we actually had about four weeks off, didn't we? Yeah, and I, um, I must admit, I, I, missed, I did miss it, but I also enjoyed the, the, the time off not writing crime, not thinking about crime. Yeah, nothing was, to do with crime. <laughs> it was nice, and you are now the proud mother of a six-year-old. Oh God, I know my so baby's you... grown up too quickly. I don't yeah, like it. <laughs> yeah, she's had a birthday, and yes. obviously you had your husband's birthday as well. Yes. And what else have we? Oh, we've been vaccinated. Well, oh yeah, we've half both had our first. Yeah, we've both had our first jags, so we're both yes. half vaccinated. So that's good. We are. Uh huh. And I, I just haven't done anything to do with true crime i haven't even listened to any true crime any no podcasts mm-hmm. which we'll is totally <laughs> well you don't usually do you <laughs> no that's just true i'm not i'm not as big on it as you but no i mean i listen to true crime podcasts like literally like nearly every day mm-hmm. so for the past few weeks i haven't listened to one single episode <laughs> but i apologize to my true crime friends who actually have podcasts but i will catch up yes um, listening to their episodes and i haven't been on social media Apart from I went on Twitter because I had a notification. Uh-huh. And guess what? Guess what? Oh, God, what? I won a competition. Oh, no <laughs> way. What, what did I win? Wait a minute. What did you win? <laughs> I won. Well, actually, I won um, two competitions. So uh, the first one, I won some stickers from the Murder Bucket podcast. Oh, right, um, okay. So I just received those, so I will I'll put a post on Twitter to say thank you and tag them. Mm-hmm. And I won a book. All right. So, yeah, um, it's called, um, from a different competition. I won uh-huh. a book, and it's called The Serial Killer's Book of Haiku. I think that's how you pronounce it. Right. Um, by, by Rose Bundy. So I'm, uh-huh. assuming, I'm assuming Rose Bundy is their um, sort of pen name. Oh, right, yeah. Because <laughs> I was like mix, isn't it? Well, I was thinking Rose West. And Ted Bundy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi. So fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm well looking, done you. yeah, I'm looking forward to reading that. So I will although, um, although technically, did you win that as crime divers or yourself? I won it as crime divers, so I'll let so you actually, read it afterwards. So actually we won a competition then. <laughs> no, I won a competition <laughs> under our name. All right, then, whatever. I'm not being funny, like, but all our all our listeners know that you don't ha- you don't do the social media, they all know it's me. <laughs> yeah i'll leave it to you to be fair <laughs> but i will let you re- i will let you read it and we can um mm-hmm. give her a shout out and let everybody know what we think of it awesome and so, then, well be- before we start though let's tell our listeners we're, we're doing something a bit different today aren't we yeah go on then slag me off <laughs> well what happened was we obviously i went down to jill's as i normally do for our recordings and we started to record 
some episodes, which was good. And then we got we were doing this one, and Jill lost it. <laughs> well, I didn't lose all of it. <laughs> all right, we had a page. We had a page of this yeah. case that we're about to do, and the rest has somehow disappeared. And I didn't even notice because I actually what started. I loaded it up on the on the computer, and we we were recorded, weren't we? So we'd yeah. done all that intro. Yeah. And then we were reading it, and then I got to the end of the first page, and I'm like, uh-huh. where the Where's hell the rest? is the rest of it? <laughs> so I'm like, motioning to Laura, press, like, stop on the recording, because I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, it must be somewhere else, and then we can yeah. just carry on. Mm-hmm. And it was nowhere to be found, so I had to write up the whole episode again. Yeah, and, and... We, want, we did want this one as our first one of season three, so I didn't really have time to come down to re-record it so we're actually doing it from our own homes today so I'm yeah. actually in my own house in my own living room and I'm in my bed <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're trying it remotely because well things happen in life and sometimes maybe we can't be together doing it so but this is the first time we've ever done it so we have no yes. idea how it's gonna go so <laughs> hopefully good I don't know what the audio is gonna sound like um uh, we're we're, shot. We've already actually had to stop because our mother decided to to phone yeah. Laura, um, even though she had told her that we were recording. Yes, yeah, nobody <laughs> listens. I know. <laughs> I'm sitting here going, "What's that beeping?" <laughs> it was I, I, it was our mother uh, calling her about a duvet, not even about... a duvet cover that she can't find, not even anything exciting. A duvet cover that she can't find, so she wanted me to ask me because obviously she had brought one up for when she stayed at Christmas time. Because she wants to bring her own duvet cover up because clearly doesn't want me to provide her with one, but you know. <laughs> um, and I was just like, really, is that what you phone me? <laughs> it, it could have waited. So I hope you're going to monitor. And next time I speak to her, I will monitor as well. Anyway, so, enough of us rambling on. Yeah, I think we've talked for long enough. It's like we've been away for ages, so we have to talk. Oh, we've missed everybody. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, let's, let's dive into this one. And well, start, you can tell me what it's called today. It's called, you'll actually be surprised at what it's called, because I actually changed the title from the last time we were recording. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I don't actually know what it's called. <laughs> no. So it's called A Moment of Madness. And there's a reason why madness. it's called that. It, there's a reason why it's called that. Um, because my first, um, ep- my first title only related to part of the story. Right. So I've changed it. So anyway... Yes, let's uh, dive in. I managed to get a, a bizarre one for you. And where is it? Um, we are in the UK. Ooh, we're starting off in their homeland. Yes, and it's... Do you know what, actually? Have all our bizarre cases not been... I think they've all been in the UK. Because we had three girls, three boys. Yeah. We had, we had... The, ho- the hotel suicide... Yeah, the Kill Me the one, Can. The one that you did. Yeah, that's all been our bizarre cases and they've all been in the UK. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's not, we're not shining a very good light on the UK, are no, we? No, we're not. We're, we're bizarre. Anyway, right. let, let's, let's dive in. So, Ursula and Sabina Eriksson were born on the 3rd of November 1967. They are identical twins and they grew up in Sun Farm, Varmland, which is in Sweden. Right. With her, with their mum and dad and their older brother and sister. So fun fact, um, there's actually a famous person from the same village with the same surname. Can you guess who it is? Somebody Ericsson. Oh, I think I might. I think I might know this. I think it could be Sven Goran Ericsson. Yeah, he. <laughs> yeah, he was actually born there, and he actually still has a house um, on the out, on the outskirts of the village. So that was a really fun fact. So. I couldn't find out anything about their childhood except that it was just pretty normal. There was no history of, um, like health, you know, mental health issues. Like neither of them had any criminal convictions. There was just nothing, nothing notable about their mm-hmm. childhood. Yeah. So, by the year two thousand, Ursula had moved to America, and Sabina was living in County Cork in Ireland with her partner and two children. So. On Friday, the 16th of May, 2008, Ursula went to visit Sabina, and mm-hmm. this, is, this is where this bizarre case starts. Right, okay. So, it's not actually known exactly what happened that night, mm-hmm. but there was an argument between Sabina's partner and 
the twins. Don't know what, but the twins sided with each other, which, you know, so it was sort of them oh, against okay. them against him. Uh-huh. So the twins left the house. They got on a ferry and they travelled traveled, traveled uh-huh. uh-huh. to Liverpool in England. Mm-hmm. Right. So they arrived at 8.30 in the morning and they went straight to a police station. Why? So, <laughs> well, I, I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> they, reported, they reported concerns of the safety of Sabina's children, which I thought was really weird because if they were concerned about the children, why did they travel to Liverpool to report it there? I mean, oh, yeah, I Googled, Why would they go to the local... Well, you'd think so, yeah, if it was that much of a concern. I mean, Mm -hmm. I googled it, and it takes seven and a half hours from Dublin to Liverpool. So if they were that worried, then, you know, they would surely they would report it to the nearest police station to Sabina's house. Mm -hmm. So the Liverpool police did contact police in Dublin, and, Mm -hmm. you know, obviously they must have followed up. Nothing came of it. I think, I don't know what that was all about. I think they'd said something about, like, kidnapping, so I'm, I'm thinking that maybe... Sabina wanted to take her children with her and the partner has been mm-hmm. like, no, no, they're staying here and she's exaggerated that as a sort of kidnapping. Um, but yeah, the kids- it, just seemed, it just seems strange to travel all the way to Liverpool to report that though. I mean, you'd think they would just go to the local PlayStation in, in Dublin to... Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, you know, considering the rest of this case, that's one of the normal things. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, um... The kids were fine. So that, that was, as I said, that was just exaggerated. There was nothing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It, was, it was fine. Right. So at about 11.30 that same morning, the twins got on a National Express coach headed to London. So Where no one... Where are they going? <laughs> well, London, apparently. But Oh, well, yeah, but what are they doing? <laughs> no, nobody even knows why they were in the UK. Never mind why they were going to London. Like, it's just not known. It's still not known now. Because I'll tell you something, like, you won't get any answers to this case. Like, they're, they're, you won't get a reason. Um, neither of the twins have explained anything about it. They haven't spoken up. Like, they're just... Right. So, so you're still going to be... So, so now you're going to bug me because now I'm not going to even know. Well, you're going to know what happened. All oh, right, okay. Um, I, it's just... Yeah, I mean, like, you would think they would give their sort of account or their side... But they don't. Right. Okay. Anyway, so obviously, obviously, so what I'm telling you, none of this has came from from them. You know right, what I mean? Okay. Like, you know, uh-huh. we don't have their side of the story. So, right, okay. The, so yeah, so they 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 um they were queuing to get on the on on the bus, uh, but they had refused to put their bags in the hold, which made the driver a bit suspicious. They were the but their bags were quite big, and they were you know it wasn't just like little handbags. You know, they're sort of yeah. Uh, um, bigger, mm-hmm. bigger bags, and they were like clutching their bag bags like close to their chest, like as if they were guarding something, something precious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So you know, obviously the driver was kind of wondering what was in them, but like obviously he had a busload of passengers, and you know he had a schedule to sort of keep to. So he was like, mm, right, okay, like let them on and and started driving. But after about an hour, the bus made an unscheduled sh- a stop. Sorry. At Keel Services, you know, like which is a motorway service station. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's not it's not clear what actually happened on the bus, but what I read was that the driver was suspicious of the twins' erratic behaviour, um, right. and he was worried about what they had in their bags. Um, and then, so when they stopped, you know, he'd he'd, he'd asked to search their bags, and they wouldn't they wouldn't let him. So he was just like, do you know what? Does he have a right to do that? Yeah, of course he does. He's got he's got to think about the safety of his mm, um, passengers, true. doesn't he? So, true. I don't know. Well, uh, uh, what what do you mean? Uh, like, I don't know if he's got a right to search their bags, but he's got a right to put them off the bus. You got? I asked him if he's got a right, a right to like because he got a right to search his bags. Like, oh uh, no, I don't. I don't know about that. I thought you meant like putting them off the bus. Like, oh um, no, I mean yeah, I mean yeah, he's obviously got a right to that. I just wondered if he had a right to search their bags because he obviously not any um, authority. I don't know, but maybe because like well. I think he does. If they're acting suspiciously and they mm. won't, I think they have. I mean, they, they could have a bomb in there. Well, that's so, true. yeah, I, I think he has a right, but whether he legally had a right to do that, I don't know. But I'm assuming that he would have a right to put them off the bus. I mean, I'm yeah. just, don't all, all drivers have a right to sort of put somebody yeah, out yeah. if they're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So he actually informed the manager of the service station about the twins' suspicious behaviour and said she should keep an eye on them. So she watched them, and she as well, she became suspicious of them, especially the fixation on their bags. And she, and as I said, she was actually worried that they, may, they might have a bomb. So mm-hmm. she decided um, to call the police. Right. So officers arrived and spoke to the twins, but they just said there had been a misunderstanding with the bus driver, and the officers left... So they mustn't have searched their bags. But I was which... going to say, like, why did they not search their bags then? Like, I don't know. They... Well, the police just... must have a right. Well, I was going to say, well, they've definitely got a right, but I don't know if that's what the bus driver was concerned about. Maybe they did, though. I mean, that maybe just wasn't reported because I will tell you later on what was in their bags. And there was nothing... There was nothing suspicious in their bags. There was nothing... Right. So maybe they did, but, like, obviously, I just don't... I haven't read that. It just... All I read was that the officers left saying that the women seemed harmless. That, and they hadn't done anything illegal, so there was nothing mm-hmm. they could do about it. Right. Right. So, um, so th- right, so now we come to the bazaar and you're just not going to believe this. Okay. So, <laughs> shortly, shortly after, the Highways Agency Control Centre in nearby Birmingham picked up two women on CCTV walking down the central reservation of the M6 next to Keo Services. So for anyone who doesn't know who's outside the UK, in the UK, the M6 is like one of the busiest motorways. It's like the longest, it's like actually the longest stretch of motorway in the country. Mm-hmm. So it's used by hundreds of thousands of vehicles every day. I mean, you know what's like, I'm sure you've been on the M6. Um, yeah, I've and there's like, yeah, there's like three lanes on either side. So if you're walking down the central reservation, you will have the fastest lanes like on either side of you. So can you imagine while you're walking down here, this traffic is like thundering past you. And like mm-hmm. obviously you shouldn't be walking there. And like I, I think I would be absolutely terrified of just all this traffic thundering past me. And you know, because what what if somebody one crashes into the reservation and anyway, so that's what do they you were know, doing. I feel like I actually do oh, I feel like I've heard this. I feel like this is saying it familiar now. Like, I, I recall something about this. I think I have heard this case. Like, not the whole case, but I think I've heard... I think I've heard, like, the, what the incident you're about to tell me is. Well, I'm going to tell you. Anyway, whether you know about it or not. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't obviously... I don't know all the details. I don't know anything about what happened before or after. I just feel like I remember an incident on the motorway with twins now. It does ring a bell. Well, the... Highway Agency's patrol unit was dispatched to take the women out of harm's way. Before they got there, the women actually attempted to cross the motorway and Sabina was actually clipped by a car travelling at 70 miles an hour. But by the time the the patrol unit got there, the twins had made it to the hard shoulder and Sabina was was fine. I I don't know how, Mm -hmm. but she was fine. So... What happened next was actually captured on camera as it just so happened, this is an amazing coincidence, mm-hmm. that a BBC film crew uh, working on the show Motorway Cops were following uh, two police officers, Tracy Cope and Paul Finlayson, because they were, um, and these were the um, officers that were closest to the scene. Mm-hmm. So how, like, how bizarre is that? that like, yeah, that is very bizarre. Yeah. Total, um, total, so, uh, total coincidence. Yeah, so it all got filmed. So... When the police police officers when the police officers got the information through the radio about the incident, they assumed that Sabina would have been seriously injured because you know she'd mm-hmm. been clipped by a fast traveling car. Well, yeah, you'd think. Um, but when they arrived at the scene, both women were actually were just standing there talking to one of the highway agency patrol officers. So, so they were talking to one officer, and then the other the other patrol officer was standing like a wee bit away. So the two officer the two police officers they went to talk to him to find out exactly what was going on. So, obviously, I watched it, and you see, like, the cameraman is focused on the officers, like, getting a briefing of what was yeah. going on. Uh-huh. But then, oh, and, and the twins and other officer are, like, are, like in the background. But mm-hmm. you actually see in the background, all of a sudden, you see Ursula running into the traffic, and she got hit by an articulated lorry. Oh, God. Yeah, you know what an articulated lorry is? It's one of those big, massive ones that has, like, uh-huh. the trailer. Yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, she got, like, So you actually saw it, and you saw her getting, like, dragged under the wheels. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, 
so obviously the officers like spring into action. They're like, "What the hell?" Uh-huh. Um, you know, like they're on the radio and like you know the others they're running to, to slow the other traffic down. Uh-huh. So obviously nobody was paying attention to Sabina. Well, and then all of a sudden you just see her running out into the traffic as well, and she got hit um, by a car. She was like thrown into the air. And then she, like, you know, obviously landed awkwardly, like, on the road. And, like, okay. you actually saw the car. Like, there was, like, a massive dent in the front of it. The, the, the windscreen was, like, totally smashed. The big, oh, no. um, even the roof of the car and everything. It was, like, oh, like, how somebody to... You wouldn't expect somebody to survive that. If you just looked at the car, you wouldn't... And, like, the, with the, um, the articulated lorry, it's, mm-hmm. apparently it's, like, very rare for anyone to survive being hit by an articulated lorry mm-hmm. so um but luckily like the, the traffic behind like there was no other accidents like they managed to kind of get slowed down nobody luckily nobody I, feel, I, feel so, I feel sorry for the drivers and at all yeah. like i mean can, can you imagine that happening like just they yeah. actually had like sort of a short interview with the um the, the driver of the articulated lorry and he was just like she just mm-hmm. ran out in front of me but you could see that he was he was just in shock like just but luckily, I mean, yeah, I'm, assu- sure, sure. Mm. I'm assuming that, well, obviously he wasn't hurt. It didn't say anything about the driver of the car, but I'm assuming they weren't hurt because there was nothing said about it. And obviously the traffic coming up behind, nobody must have been going that fast that they couldn't stop in time, you know, so there was no other accidents. Because, you know, if that happens, sometimes if they're driving too fast, they don't stop in time and it causes more accidents. But luckily nothing else happened. Yeah, well, that's good. Um. So the officers, they didn't think that either women would survive, you know, as I've, you know, just sort of explained to you what happened. So officers ran to the women who were both lying motionless on the road. So obviously, obviously they were being seen at the same time, like different officers with different women. But like, I'll tell you, like, obviously one at a time what happened with each Mm woman. Yeah. So PC Tracy Cope went to Sabina, who was unconscious. She came round after about 15 minutes. The paramedics had arrived and Sabina had like tried to get up. Um, PC Cope like sort of you know pushed her back down. He was like, no, no, you you know you you're hurt, you know you can't mm-hmm. just lay still. Um, and then Sabina was like, you could see her like sort of try, still try to get up, and she was getting like agitated. And then mm-hmm. she starts shouting, "They're gonna steal your organs." Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna they're they're gonna steal your organs. Um, and, you know, she was struggling and try- you could see she was getting angry and she was getting annoyed right. and she was, like, try- trying to get up. And this police officer's, like... Quite agitated and... Yeah, she was really, mm-hmm. like, agitated, violent, like, mm-hmm. you know, this this woman, this, this police officer is, like, no, you know, you, you've been hurt. Like, just, you know, stay where you are and let the paramedics sort of, you know, see... So is it, this is all on camera as well, is it? Yeah, this is all on yeah. camera. I'm, I'm telling you telling you what I, what I saw. Uh-huh. So... Because it's on YouTube. <laughs> it's just, I, mean, I just typed in on YouTube, twins running in the motorway, and it came up. Mm-hmm. Um, so Sabina actually managed to get up eventually, even though the officer was, like, sort of still holding on to her. So Sabina was, like, pulling away from her, and, you know, the, the, the officer was like, you know, can somebody help me? Like, you know, try to hold on to her. And yeah. it's, Sabina just turned around and punched her in the face. And... Uh, the officer, like oh. she had, the officer actually fell to the ground and Sabina ran and she jumped over the barrier of the central reservation and onto the other side of the motorway and ran into the moving traffic on the other side of the motorway. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so luckily the other side, I don't think, I don't think it must have been bu- as busy. It looked like on the camera, it didn't look like there was as many cars. There was like sort of a big gap. Um, right. So, so she actually, she wasn't hit. The, the officers had ran after her and she was just like, running about on the road, like, try and catch me, you know, like, well, not try and catch me, but, like... Well, just, like, running backwards and forwards and on the road. Yeah. You know, like, if you're you're kids, right, and you're playing a game of, like, tag, tag, whatever you want to call it, and you're sort of, like, come and get me over, like, Uh one person's running one way and you're running the other way, it was like that. And um, the guy, um, the PC, uh, Finlayson, like, he was trying, you know, come on, like, just calm down, like, we need to get you off the road. And she's like, she actually, she took her cardigan off as if to say, right, I'm ready for a fight. And uh-huh. like, she, so she was, so she was like, obviously focused on this officer. She didn't realize that the other, other officer and actually members of the public had stopped mm-hmm. to help. So they were coming up behind her and they managed to like grab a hold of her from behind. Right, okay. 
So I think they managed, it looked like they managed to get like handcuffs on her. So they got their hands behind her back and managed to get handcuffs on her. Um, but it actually took six people, so this is members of the public as well, to actually lift her up. So she was like, you know, you had people at, at the top end of her and then people like sort of like holding her legs. Right. But then she was like kicking out her legs, trying to kick them all in the face and everything like that and screaming for help. And she managed, like, as I said, she managed to get her feet loose. Yeah, she was kicking out everybody. So imagine, eventually they managed to get her down on the ground uh-huh. um, while she was screaming, help, call the police. And, you know, they're like, we are the police, we're trying to help you. And she's like, call the police. And then they, t- they actually had to, like, tie her legs. Um, and she's screaming, fuck you. And they actually I managed so, like, I wonder how, like, they must have felt because obviously she had been hit by a car. So I'm like, well, does she, is she not going to, like, if, if she's injured, or are they making it worse because they're obviously trying to restrain her, but are they causing <laughs> any more? I mean, it's, it must have been an awkward situation. If... I just don't understand how she didn't have injuries. Like, well, yeah. I mean, how she still uh, managed to get up and run about, I have no idea. I mean. Unless it's like adrenaline. <laughs> I, I have, well, I mean, you know yourself, I've actually seen somebody knocked over. My best friend got knocked over when we were, I think we were like 14 years old, I think we were. And Uh she got hit by a car from the front. She went up in the air Uh and landed at the back of the car on the ground. So I saw that happen, which is similar similar to the way that Selena Uh got hit. And, you know, they didn't even think my friend was going to make it through the night. I mean, luckily she survived, but she had, you know, a fractured skull. She had broken pelvis, you know. So how... Sabina managed to get up after this and do, is unbelievable. I know, especially because um, the car would have been travelling a lot faster than probably the one that hit your friend as well. Yeah, yeah, because it was on it was on the motorway. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. so eventually they managed to like she was all tied up and they managed to like sort of get her to the side of the road uh-huh. and the medics gave her um, something to sedate her because she was just too violent to, to for them to even look at her, you know. Right. Um, so they, they, they managed to get her in an ambulance and took her off to the hospital um, at Stoke and Trent. Right. So that's Sabina's side. So see, what's happened to the other one? <laughs> She's just as bad, although obviously she can't get up. Um, right. So PC Paul Finlayson, she went to Ursula, who had uh-huh. clear, she'd obviously clearly sustained, sub, sustained? Sustained. Sustained. <laughs> sustained massive leg injuries. He uh-huh. said that it looked like her leg had exploded Ooh. and like she had bones pr- protruding. I mean, luckily you couldn't see that on the camera. Oh, I mean, God. Uh, uh-huh. The way you, you saw her lying on, like, obviously when I was watching, I could see her lying and her legs were at a sort of funny angle, but you couldn't see anything. Right. Thank God, because, you know, I'm squeamish. I don't want to see anything like that. No, no, no. Just, um, <clears throat> so I thought was on, was, she was conscious, which I couldn't believe as well. I was like, how are you well, conscious? Yeah. Um, so, and so, so the police, uh, PC Finlayson had said to her, you know, right, okay, you're all right. We're police officers. We're here to help you. Uh-huh. And she said, I recognize you. You're not real. All right. Uh, and she started shouting at him, say, you know, she's shouting and going, I want the police. Uh-huh. Uh, and he's saying, we are the police. And, you know, his, he said that his initial thought was that she had like a substance abuse problem. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Like, are they, because I mean, the two of them are like, it's like, like they're hallucinating. They're not. Mm-hmm. They're, they're like out, out of the, like they're not on the planet properly. I mean, and it's crazy. Like the, <laughs> not the, on the, the two planet. Of, what do you know what I mean? <laughs> like they're just out of it. They're like it's they're not like normal behavior. Yeah, yeah, but they're both the same as well, which is even more crazy. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, like you know, obviously. So this this, this police officer he'd said that people that have taken certain substances can be incredibly violent, and they can work through the pain because. That's what they couldn't understand as well. Like, surely these women must be in a hell of a well, lot of pain. I would have thought so. Um, so, so Ursula, she was aggressive. She even spat at the officer. Oh, my God. Really? Which, to oh. me, that's just a no, 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 well, no, no. I don't no. like spitting. spitting. And the only time I think it's appropriate to spit is if you're brushing your teeth and you're <laughs> spitting out your water and you think... <laughs> Exactly. The only time it was appropriate to, to oh, if you're at the dentist, you have to swell. Yeah, 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 that sort of thing. But yeah, no spitting for me is just a. I I would never dream of no matter how angry I was. No, um. So I, I I'm like so she spat at, spat at the officer, and I'm I'm not quite sure, but I think I heard her calling him a, a bitch ass. <laughs> bitch ass. <laughs> I, I think that's what I heard. I'm not sure. Um, right. and like he was trying to calm her down, and she was calling him a fucking asshole. 
and like she was trying to get up she was like sort of clawing at him you know like uh, like he's like kind of like trying to move away get his face away from her like and and he said she obviously just didn't realize how injured that she was she must have felt it i have no idea how but um luckily it didn't take long for the for an air ambulance to arrive Mm -hmm. and she she was she was taken off to hospital so so obviously that was that on the motorway that was so is there more (laughs) is there there more (laughs) well do you not want to know what was in their bag yes i do i I would like to know what's in their bag yes well i was dying to find out what was in their bag so, mm-hmm. so the the officers um had a look in their bag at the side of the road because they were they were obviously like trying to find out like identification like so they could mm. call the next of kin. Of course. Um, so there were several mobile phones, right? A passport and a laptop. Was that? It? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was going to say the juicy. <laughs> exactly. Like while I was researching this, I was like, what? what? What did they have? They must have sat really. I don't so know, they were like, all they were. So they were guarding their suitcases or bags. Their whatever. bags. I mean, it, it looks a, a bit dodgy that they had several mobile phones. I mean, they, who needs several mobile phones? But, but apart from that, a passport and a laptop. Like, I'm wondering where the other person, but another passport. I don't know whose passport it was. Right. Okay. But if you're coming from Dublin to England, you need a passport, don't you? Because uh, that's okay. Ireland. That's yeah, yeah. Ireland, so you need a passport. So mm-hmm. I don't know why there was only one passport. Unless it was well, I don't know. But yeah. Anyway, okay. yeah. Um so yeah, that that's a mystery. And I, I I don't know. Um right. so they, they got in touch um with Sabina's partner. So I don't know well again, I still don't know whose passport it was because they could find out Sabina's partner from either because they could obviously see they're identical twins, so yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, and so they they got in touch with him and he had no idea why she was in England or why she was acting the way she was like he just was he must have got the shock of his life being like, yeah I'm assuming hell? I'm assuming the last he was in one was they'd had an argument and the and they'd start the out just take it off somewhere yeah so yeah. he I mean I'm sure he would I'm he I'm assuming that he would just think oh they've just booked into a bed and breakfast or something for the night no. you know just <laughs> so yeah <laughs> he had no idea Right, so that's that. Oh, so is there more think... to this story? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You would think that was it, that was bad enough. Yeah, no. I was going to say, is that it? No, okay. No. So, Ursula was in a critical condition in the hospital, but Sabina was only in the hospital for five hours before she was given the really? all clear. Yeah, five hours she was in. Wow. She was given the all clear, had no injuries. How? I have no idea. Um, Please so tell me they didn't just release her. They released her into police custody. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Your relief is going to be short-lived. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, I heard that in, in your voice. I thought, oh, she wasn't released, it's fine. No. So the police that were waiting for, to take her into custody, they prepared themselves for this, like, violent, aggressive woman that the officers, because the officers, you know, they'd obviously warned them and, told, you know, so they told them what had happened um, on the motorway. But she was fine. She was, like, totally calm. She didn't need to be handcuffed, you know, so she, she shouldn't try to get away from him or anything like that. Got right. in the car, no problem. Um, she was, you know, she was, actually, she was talking in the car. She was quite chatty. Uh-huh. Um, and, like, at the police station, while she, she was being processed, she was even, like, sort of being a bit flirty with one of the male officers. She just seemed normal. Like, there's just nothing really to say about it. She just seemed normal. Right, but there was okay. one... There was one thing that she did actually say, which was caught on camera as well, because I'm, I'm I'm still watching this. This is still oh, right, okay. on right, camera. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, she said, "Quote: We say always in Sweden that an accident rarely comes alone. Usually, at least one more follows, perhaps two." End quote. So at that time, I'm sure it would have seemed weird to the people who were there, but uh-huh. judging by what else is going to happen, it makes sense. Right. So, okay. Yeah, we're nowhere near finished. Okay. So like anybody take, you know, who's taken into custody, Sabina was asked about her medical history and she said you know, she'd never tried to harm herself before because it, what the police were thinking was, was this like a suicide pack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's what it seems like, doesn't it? Like they're both running out of traffic. It seems like a suicide. But yeah. um, she said that she'd never tried to harm herself before. Uh, they were tested for drugs, both of them. And right. 
alcohol and they came back clear. So they weren't under the... So they like, were They weren't under no. the... My they God, were, I was I'm surprised by that then because I really thought that they were. Especially well, it sounds like seen, it. I mean, I know they're identical twins, but they're, you know, they're sort of, the way that they sounded, the way that they were, they were acting, that was the same. So you mm-hmm. think that they were obviously yeah. either maybe on something that they were making them the same, but that's just crazy. It is, isn't it? Like, mm. you just, the way that they've acted, the way, you, like watching it, listening to them, like, I, I was, yeah, I think everybody was probably surprised. Uh-huh. So, um, Sabina was charged with assault on a police officer and trespass on a motorway. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing, so... No, neither did I, but fair there enough. You go. I mean, but to be fair, fair, you shouldn't be on there. Yeah, don't cross a motorway. <laughs> Which I wouldn't do anyway. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. I mean, it's stupid enough. Not on the M6 anyway. That's Oh, definitely not. Oh, that's a scary motorway. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I shall... Our so <laughs> Sorry, what was her name? <laughs> Ursula. <laughs> I can't believe I just called her Ursula. <laughs> I'm really bad with names, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> so Ursula was still in hospital and she wasn't charged. Which I find, sub- I know she was in hospital, but I still think she should have been charged for the trespass on the motorway. Like, oh, yeah, was, I mean, yeah. you know, she didn't. I mean, well, yeah, technically she did assault a police officer as well because she spat spat at him. Spat at him, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and she was trying to mm-hmm. but you know, she never got charged with anything in this. Spat um yeah. So Sabina was kept in custody for a couple of days. I think it must have been just because it was the weekend, because that was right. a Saturday. And uh-huh. she wouldn't have been able to have her court thing, you know, till the Monday. So she kept uh-huh. she was kept in the custody. So she pled guilty to the charges and she was sentenced to a day in custody. But she'd but- yeah, exactly. Um, she'd already served that, so she was free to go. Oh my god! Please, they didn't. What? They just let her go. Yeah. See, I told you your your relief would be short lived. <sighs> See, like to me, she should have been referred to some, like even just to get assessed by like a psychiatric person or something. Well, I I you, I will tell you later on in the story, but she did actually get assessed when she was at the police station. But we'll come to that later. Right, on. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So when she left the court. She started wandering the streets in Stoke on Trent because you have to remember she's she she like lives in Ireland like oh she, yeah 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 she's got nowhere to stay nowhere to go she she doesn't know where she is basically you know so she she doesn't even know where the hospital is where Ashley is so she, she's like just wandering the streets like trying to find the surprised hospital they, I'm surprised they obviously let her go then because if they know that she's come from Ireland she has no idea where she's going she's got nowhere to stay. I would, you know, I mean, I don't know how it works with the police, but I would have thought they would have been like, right, well, you know, have you got somewhere to go? Do you mm. know anybody? Is there anybody we can contact for you? And if she's been like, no, because I'm only my sister, etc. I don't even know where the hospital is. Well, yeah. They would, they would show they would where like, the hospital yeah. is. Yeah, well, I would have thought so. Or, or, or you know, advise her where to go. Well. It's, it's funny, though, because, like, when she was in the police station, she never once asked about her sister. She didn't seem to... Well, if that if that was you, I mean, I'd be like, well, how is she? Is she all right? Is she alive? Uh, yeah. You know, like, yeah. and when I got, if I'd been um, kept in the custody, like, for a couple of nights, the first thing I would want to do is find out where you were and come yeah. and see you. So the first thing I would want to do was, like, right, can you please tell me where the, where, well, where which, which hospital is that? Yeah. yeah. Which hospital she'd been taken to. But, yeah, that didn't happen. So she was just wandering the streets, sort of, like, in a place that she didn't know, like, looking for this hospital. And all her all her possessions were in like a one of these clear plastic bags, you know, that, that the police give you. So, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. About nine thirty that night, she saw two men walking with a dog, and mm-hmm. she sort of said to mother, "You know, that's a nice dog." And mm-hmm. they stopped and like started up a conversation. So the two men were fifty four year old Glenn Hollinshead and his friend Peter Malloy. Don't know how old Peter was. Um, no. I don't think it's relevant to be honest, but you know. Um, they had been having a drink at the local pub, um, and the, they were walking home. And uh, the dogs mm. had the had the dog with them, so they were walking home from the pub. So they they said uh, Peter had said that like Sabina just seemed a bit lost, but mm. she was but like she was friendly. Um, but like Peter was a bit weary. He was th- kind of thinking like why she got her stuff in a clear bag, because I think it kind of. Well, it does seem yeah. a bit weird. Like, why would you be carrying your stuff about yeah. like that? Uh-huh, yeah. um, mm-hmm. But Glenn didn't seem bothered. You know, they were just like chatting away. So she told them that her sister was in hospital and that she'd been trying to find it. So 
obviously it's like half nine at night, so she she must have thought it was too late to keep looking. So she's asked for directions to a bed and breakfast. Right. Okay. Um. So Glenn had said, you know, like like there's no bed and breakfast around here. Um. Why don't you come back to the house and we'll we'll get you know we'll have we'll have a bite to eat and then we'll try and find out like where your sister is or try and find you somewhere to to stay. Um, and apparently this is quite normal. Like he's, Peter had said like this is that's just Glenn. He was like just like a really nice guy. He would always like try and help mm-hmm. out anybody who was in need. You know there was nothing, yeah. nothing bad yeah. about it. You know he just saw this woman that needed help and offered yeah. her help basically. So the three of them headed to Glenn's house and um, apparently Sabina's personality sort of opened up a bit more. She was a bit more like bubbly and like mm-hmm. chatty and friendly and seemed happy. You know that they, that right. they were help that they were helping her. Uh-huh. So Peter. Peter offered to carry her bag, and he could, like, obviously, he could, he could see what was in it. So there were two mobile phones, a laptop, duty-free cigarettes. So, so those duty-free cigarettes must have still been in the other bags, but the police just haven't mentioned right, it. Right, OK. Uh-huh. Um, and a red cardigan in it. And that was right. actually the cardigan that she'd been wearing when she ran out in the traffic, but for whatever reason, she was now wearing Ursula's jacket. Because when, right, Ursula, okay. when Ursula ran out in the traffic, the... the um, the highway patrol guy had tried to grab her and like, but he grabbed her jacket and her jacket came off, so her jacket wasn't ah, actually right, okay. involved in the accident. So anyway, I don't right, okay. think that I don't think that there's any. You think she would like be phoning her her husband? No. Well, obviously not. <laughs> Maybe she was still pissed off. <laughs> I mean, phone a name, make sure he's not like check CMRA and like obviously. You know. No, like she, maybe she was still pissed off with him for whatever their argument was. But obviously, Maybe. we don't we 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 don't know we we won't know um so peter you know obviously he was wary and he was thinking what's going on here who is this woman mm-hmm. like you know has she just been kicked out somewhere has she just been in hospital like mm-hmm. are these yeah. I- items are these items actually hers or is she broken in somewhere she's stolen them there was just like all sorts of things like running through his oh, head at the end of the day they don't know anything about this woman they just come across yeah. her in the streets so i mean and it's not often you see somebody really. with, a, with a clear bag, do you? Like, it's just weird. Like, whenever I see somebody yeah. with a clear bag, it's usually on the telly and they've just been let out of jail or something. So, well, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, or, or, oh. the, only, the only other place you'd see it now is if you're in the in the airport because you have to put like liquids in, yeah. in a clear, in a oh, clear yeah. bag to go through. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't see it in anybody else really walking around with a clear bag, would you? So, um, where was I? I lost my place. <laughs> oh yeah, so they got back to Glenn's house, and they sat down with a couple of beers. And Peter tried to find out more about Sabina. He asked her what had happened to her sister, but as soon as Ursula was mentioned, there was an abrupt change to Sabina's. Sa- Sabina's. See, there we go again. I keep getting people's names wrong. <sighs> Sabina's Sabina mood. Sabina teenage witch. Sabina's a teenage witch. That's just like no Sabina. Sabina. So. We can stop sniffing. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. I don't know why, but I feel very sniffling this morning. Sorry. I don't, I don't you... mean to. I have to breathe, though. I don't know, I'm just thinking, are you remembering we're actually recording a podcast? No, oh, but I can't help it. I'm sorry. I'll try and breathe through my mouth. Yeah. Um, so she became slightly defensive, and from the, then on, like she was fine until they mentioned her sister, and then she would turn cold, right. which is strange. Mm. After a while... Um, it seemed like Sabina was getting a bit paranoid and she kept, like, kept getting up and pulling the curtains to the side and she was like looking out and then quickly snatching them back. And Peter was just really unsettled by, by her. And he kept like sort of looking at Glenn for reassurance, but Glenn just, he wasn't bothered by her behaviour at all. Right. At, one, at one point, Sabina got out her a pack of cigarettes and she offered mm-hmm. them to Peter and Glenn and they both took one. Mm-hmm. And just as they were about to light up, she snatched the cigarettes away from their mouths and said they might be poisoned. All right. You, you can't have them. But bear in mind, this was the same pack of cigarettes that she'd been smoking from all night. So that strange well, behaviour. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. So Peter was getting paranoid and freaked out by her behaviour, which I don't blame him. And Glenn was relaxed and just like dismissed her behaviour as quirky. Well, like, no, I don't blame either. Mm, um, but Peter, Peter just wanted to get himself out of that situation. He actually went home. So Sabina, she stayed the night at Glenn's house. And the next day, he called his brother Paul, who worked at the local hospital, to ask him if he could check and see if Ursula had been admitted there. 
So his brother yeah. said that, you know, he would check and he would, he would get back to him. Mm-hmm. So later on, Glenn was making dinner for Sabina and asked if she wanted a cup of tea. So he realised that he'd, he'd run out of tea bags. Um, so he, he like looked out the window and he saw his neighbour, Frank, washing his minibus. Um, so, Fra- so, so sorry, Glenn went out and asked Frank if he could borrow some tea bags. So Frank mm-hmm. had said, right, just, just let me rinse this off and then I'll go and get you some. So Glenn mm-hmm. went back, in, back into his house, but he came out just over a minute later and he looked at Frank and said, she stabbed me. What? Yeah, she stabbed me. Frank said that he could see the blood pumping out of him. Oh, my he God. Had, he had been stabbed five times in about 70 seconds. That's how quick it was. Oh, Jesus. So Frank phoned for an ambulance, um, obviously. And Glenn, mm-hmm. Glenn was saying, I'm dying, I'm dying. And mm-hmm. Frank, Frank said he was, you know, trying to make... Try to, you know, like in that yeah, sure and yeah. yeah, and he yeah. was like, "You can't be dying, you know, in this day and age. The good ones go first, not like you." Uh-huh. And uh, Glenn sort of laughed, and then his his final words were, "Look after my dog," and then oh, he died. Oh no! Did he die? Oh my yeah. god! And that was his final words: "Look after my dog." See, I mean, I know he was being like the good Samaritan and stuff like that, like obviously taking this poor girl in, but that's just why I would not, you know, if I. A stranger that you come across somewhere like that, I would not offer them to come back to my house. I mean, I wouldn't say I wouldn't offer them to help if they were lost or needed to find somewhere. Hmm. I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't take them back to my house because I know not everybody's like that, but you just don't know. And what a shame! He was just trying to, you know, help help her, and he's ended up losing his life over it. Yep. Um. So CCTV captured a woman running from Glenn's house carrying a hammer. So a man called Joshua. A hammer. Yeah. Oh, we're not finished yet. Oh, my God. So, a man called Joshua Grattage was driving along, and out the corner of his eye, he noticed Sabina, like, running. Yeah. But she was, like, hitting herself over the head with a hammer. Right. And he could see lots of blood, and, like, her hair was, like, all matted with the blood. Uh-huh. Right. So, he stopped the car and got out and, you know, obviously tried to take the, ca- the hammer off her. And she was fighting with him to stop him from getting it, and then she hit him over the head with something which he actually assumed was her fist, but he was told later by the police that it was actually a roof tile that she'd had in her pocket. A roof tile? Yeah, I had no what idea why she had she a, roof. a roof tile? I don't know, but she hit him over the head with it. So, and then she ran off after hitting him and she was she was followed by two paramedics. So somebody had obviously already fo- like told them about maybe seeing a woman hitting her head or whatever and the paramedics, I don't Anyway, she was followed by them. So um, that the guy Joshua, he was just like, right, okay, it's out of my hands now. You know, I've tried yeah. to help, and so I've got her over the head with a roof tile. <laughs> yeah, well, he didn't know that at the time, but yeah. So she kept running, and she came to a bridge which was forty feet over the A fifty motorway, and she jumped. Oh God! Yeah, so she jumped again into moving traffic. She jumped off a bridge into moving traffic, oh but God. luckily she wasn't hit, and she survived. But she, she broke both her ankles and fractured her skull. So she was admitted to hospital. So three months later, in September 2008, Ursula was discharged from the hospital and she moved back to Sweden. All right, okay. Uh, and that same month, Sabina also left the hospital because she'd obviously, you know, she had a fractured skull and a broken ankle. So she'd been in for three uh-huh. months um, and she was charged with Glenn's murder. So right. Sabina, she answered no comment to every question that she was asked. So she has never told her account of what happened. Right. The trial was 18 months later, and despite the strength of evidence against Sabina, this case was in no way straightforward. The judge would later describe it as one of the most difficult he had ever presided over. Uh-huh. So Sabina was assessed by two forensic psychiatrists, one for the defence and one for the prosecution. Mm-hmm. So both agreed at the time that she had killed Glenn, she had been mentally ill. But their diagnoses, is that how you say your diagnosis? Like diagnoses, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, they differed. So right. the defence diagnosis was um, induced delusional disorder. Its common name is called fo- folie a deux. It's a French thing. Right, okay. So obviously I can't pronounce it properly. No, okay. Uh-huh. Um, which basically means madness in two people. 
So it's a very rare condition where one person of the two has a recognised psychotic illness and the other person is infected by it. And they take, they take on the abnormal beliefs of the person who is ill. So what they think is like Sabina, eh, not Sabina, sorry, Ursula was mentally ill. Right. And Sabina, because they're so close with them being uh-huh. identical twins, she's been yeah. like a, sort of infected by it. It's, you know, That's not really the right word, but you know what I mean? Like that's kind of rubbed off onto her. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Identical twins often have like a, obviously a really close relationship. So psychologically, there's like a blurring of boundaries of who is who, and because right. they're genetically identical, they would have similar genetic loading for developing psychotic illnesses. Yeah, so there okay. you go. That's that's one that's one diagnosis. Uh-huh. Um, the prosecution diagnosis was acute polymorphic psychotic disorder. And this disorder also has another name, which is French, but I just couldn't pronounce it. So um, I didn't even write it down because I'm not even going to try. But it basically means a puff of madness. A puff of madness. A puff of madness. That's what it translates to, which is why it's like a moment of madness, which is why I've named the episode. That's why I changed Uh it. Uh Um, So it's a transient psychotic illness when, when... a person very abruptly com- becomes ill. Usually it lasts for a short time, perhaps two or three weeks, and then it goes away again. Right, okay. So, both of the psychiatrists had partly based their diagnosis on the M6 footage, which provided evidence of the twin's psychotic state. Uh-huh. So, Glenn's family, he they obviously want to know who made the decision after the motorway incident like, who made that decision to say that, that Sabina was fit and well? So, but apparently she had been seen on four separate occasions by a police surgeon, a, mm-hmm. consul- a consultant psychiatrist, and a suitably qualified social worker. Right. Those medical professionals were satisfied that there was no obvious sign of any mental or psychological illness. But, the, but that's those... just crazy considering what has happened. I mean, even if she's not displaying that behaviour in those moments, she was running around the bloody motorway. That's mad. I know, yeah. But apparently, like, these people who assess you at the police station, they're basically just assessing you to see if you're fit to be interviewed. If You know, if you're in a... Mm-hmm. You, if you're fit enough to be able to answer questions and stuff like that, which she was at the time. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and these medical medical professionals had no access to the film material though they hadn't seen right okay the footage on the motorway so i mean although they might have been told of, well i'm assuming they would have been told about it um it's, hearing about it and seeing it as two different things i would think so maybe if they'd actually seen the, the footage then maybe the results yeah. would have been different i don't know obviously that, that's just what happened so right but neither, neither of the psychiatrists um I say Ursula. Ursula has just out, been out of the pit. I don't understand. Ursula was involved in this at the start. Why Why hasn't she been assessed? I don't understand it. She was obviously treated in hospital for her physical injuries. Yeah. Um. But Why hasn't she been assessed for her mental? I don't know. But instead they relied on hospital notes and, and the accounts of others. And Sabina continued mm-hmm. to say nothing about either the motorway incidents or the mur- incident or the murder of Glenn so Mm -hmm. Sabina pled guilty to manslaughter by reason of diminished responsibility but it was difficult because Mm -hmm. even though the psychiatrist said that Sabina was mentally ill when she killed Glenn she had fully recovered since then yeah so the judge couldn't send Sabina to like a you know like a secure um like hospital you know because like because she was no longer ill so no, okay, yeah. mm-hmm. he said that his next preferred option would have been to give Sabina a sentence with no fixed release date uh-huh. to, to ensure that she would only be freed when it was safe to do so. But he could only do that if she was considered a risk to the public. Personally, I think she's a risk to the public, but... Well, I think so, definitely. Um, the judge wanted to know to assist him with the sentence and was... Like, he, he wanted to know what the risk was that she posed for uh-huh. the future. Yeah. But both both the defence and the prosecution psychiatrist told the judge that she was a low risk to the public. Really? Because she was fully recovered now. Right, okay. Um, yeah. But, mm, <laughs> so anyway, so 
the judge complained that his hands were tied. His wish mm-hmm. was that Sabina would be monitored both before and after she was released. Mm-hmm. But instead, because she's realistic, under law, he had to give her like a fixed set prison sentence with no right. supervision, no supervision on release. Oh, okay. And she was sentenced to five years. Five years. Well, it was manslaughter on uh, diminished responsibility. Oh, so, God, uh, enough, so, so it wasn't like you know, like first degree murder yeah, or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that so. So she. So, would... She'll be out by now. She'll be out by now, yeah. And, Mom, I'm assuming that she's uh, not mad. <laughs> but I'm thinking that, I, th- I think from what I sort of got from, it was basically, um, you know, just from overall, what I got was, but, sh- but I mean, um, Ursula has now moved back to America. Oh, um, okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where Sabina is. I've got a feeling she could be in Sweden. I'm not sure if she's Sweden. back in Ireland. I'm not sure. I don't know. So where is she not with her husband? In I country? don't know. Right. Okay. Well, I'm assuming. Like, well, whenever she is, she's maybe where where kids uh-huh. and her husband. But um, if she, but it could happen again if she's with Ursula. This this could happen again. So is it almost like they shouldn't be together? I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just like there is a chance. I don't right. know how. I don't know how that's big crazy. that chance is. Uh huh. So like, that's mental. How like one twin has a mental thingy, so it could then have a, you know, the other twin with they're with them and they can then sort of pass through them almost and then become... It's crazy, though. I, uh, I, it's, it's, I told you it was bizarre. I know, but I would... I, I wish... I mean, one, I'm, I'm actually amazed they even both survived the initial madness on the motorway. Thing. Yeah. But I would love to know what the hell happened, <laughs> like, from their perspective, like, what actually happened that day? Like, what, like well, what happened to cause them to go and come to Liverpool in the first place, to then travel to London, to then end up on a bloody motorway, dancing with the traffic and getting hit. Maybe then... they don't know themselves. Maybe that's why they haven't spoken out. Maybe. Because maybe, because obviously they, they were mentally ill at the time. Mm-hmm. Maybe they they don't know, they can't explain it, maybe they don't remember. You know, there could be all mm-hmm. sorts of reasons why. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like, I told you there was there was no sort of reason for it. Like, yeah, uh-huh. I mean, uh, there is a reason, as in they were mentally ill. Obviously, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Re- a reason for it. But like, mm-hmm. yeah, we we just don't know what was going on through their minds or anything like no. that. So, oh, no, that's crazy. So there you go. I have to say that was a a good episode for our first one back for season three. Yeah, I I'm enjoyed an, it. I I'm annoyed, it, but I mean, like, I I, I like the story. It was interesting. It was bizarre, crazy. You didn't um, have to write it twice, so did you? Well, no. Well, well, that was sort of your fault. Yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> thank you for listening, everybody. And yes, thank you. Thank, thank you for coming back for our third season. And mm-hmm. um, if you would You're... like to follow us on social media, we are on Instagram and Twitter. We are crime underscore divers underscore pod. <laughs> I was just wondering, are we actually going to remember? Because we haven't done this <laughs> haven't done this for a few weeks. Hey, give, me, <laughs> give me a minute. Let's get the rest done. Right. Okay. Um, Facebook. Crime divers podcast. Email. Crime underscore divers underscore pod at outlook.com. Um, YouTube. Crime divers podcast. TikTok. Crime Divers podcast. Yeah, that's all one word though on the YouTube. Yes, uh, no, on yes. you, uh, it's not on YouTube. But, oh, it doesn't matter. You can find us. You just type it in. You'll find us. You get it. <laughs> um, and on Patreon, we remember we have our offer that yes. if you join up before the end of June, you will get August free because yes. we love August. It's our birthdays. It's, <laughs> it's the birthday of the podcast. Yeah, it's, it's just a celebration. And it's just the best month of the year. It is. And remember, if you do like us, please subscribe, rate, rate review. review. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for listening. See you next we'll time. See you again. Bye. Bye.